my life was very much a case of, and no offense to my mum and dad at all, you know, it was very much a case of a small village mindset of, you know, you'll go to school, Ricky, you know, not, they didn't say you won't achieve much, but university wasn't on the cards, you know, because the money wasn't there. It would be like, Ricky, you, you might go to school. You've got to get a job, Ricky, you got to get some money. And I could see my life being played out in that way of, it'll be very small in a sense, you know, um, comfortable, you know, and I was always the, why? You know, I don't like that. When we first met Ricky Locke on Instagram, we knew he was someone we wanted to be involved with. This was about three or four years ago now. And uh, ever since that, we've done quite a lot of projects together. Um, so it was fascinating today when chatting to him to hear things we'd never heard before. The desire to be on stage, to perform, to entertain people started at a very, very young age when no one else in his family was a performer or doing anything like that. And how he wants to fail, he's happy to fail for him, it's just a learning process. And for someone who truly believes that, it was fascinating uh, to kind of hear that perspective. Um, if you've never met Ricky before and you don't know who he is, then his links are in the description below. And if you're new here and you're watching this for the first time, please do subscribe to our channel. It means so much to us as a small business as we grow and we're trying to achieve what we're trying to achieve. Thank you so much for watching. Please allow me to introduce you to Ricky Locke. Right, Ricky, you know I'm one of your biggest fans. We've known you since pretty much the beginning of the Yellow Tuxedo Adventure. Um, so it's a real privilege to get to talk to you today on this uh, on the Digital Circus Live podcast. But we have to start at the beginning. And the beginning for everyone is we're trying to understand what you're trying to achieve, whether it be for your personal life or your business, you know, or the blend of both of them together, life. What are you trying to achieve? At mm. this point. At this point. At this point. Um, it's a fantastic question. Amazing question. <laughs> so what am I trying to achieve? Well, I guess there's a, a, a plethora. There we go. Nice word there. Plethora of different things. Tick. Um, Tick, yeah. Loads of different things to achieve. I think in the last two or three years, it's, it's probably niching it down into something that's um, wholesome, mm -hmm. that's fulfilling, that creates wonder. The biggest thing I think every day is that, I, and we've mentioned this before about this question, um, is this action going to produce the outcome I'm looking for. So everything I do, I have to ask myself that question. But I, I just have this massive, um, you know, a bit like a glass thing, you know. Um, the, the glass, is it filling my cup? You know, I think that's everything I'm trying to achieve. So whatever it is that I do, whether it's, um, you know, interactions in life, whether it's personal life, business, magic, confident club, is it filling my cup? And if it isn't, then it's not part of that achievement in life, really. So... I think that there's a lot of things that I could kind of digress and go on further. But the main thing really, I think, is to achieve just this fulfilling life of mm. amazement and wonder. And, you know, I think one of my things I'm very conscious of is that I am, you know, I'm, I'm in my early 30s. And so old. I'm very, I'm so old, yeah. Uh, I'm very impatient because I'm a millennial. You know, I grew up yeah. with the world of, you know, uh, internet and everything. So... I'm very impatient. I want things fast now, you know, that kind of thing, because I don't know where life will be. So I do try to, you know, make everything intentional, the old 4,000 weeks, you know, of an average human life. So everything I try to do, I guess, to achieve, to answer your question, would be a fulfilling life. Yeah. So would you say your cup is a pint glass or a shot glass? I think we know hey. the answer already, but... I'd like to say it'd be like a porn star martini glass. That'd be quite fun. Mate. Exotic. <laughs> that is exotic. way cooler, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't take too much to fill it up. There we go. <laughs> no. Um, you know what? It's, what was it? I read this. Um, so obviously with, with my daughter, I read this. Um, is it The Fox, The Mole by Charlie, Charlie Mackesy? Oh, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. Boy, the Boy and the Horse. It, yeah. yeah. With an Oscar as well, the, horse. Yeah. the video version. That's right. Yeah. And I think one of the questions was, is I think the the horse says to the little boy, "Is your glass half full or half empty?" And he, the boy says, "I think I'm just grateful to have a glass." <laughs> I think yeah. it's great, isn't it? You know, like I think I can't remember the answer, the, the question now. But um, what was your question, Emily? There we go. I was getting off sidetrack. It was there. how big was your cup? I was going to say, who cares yeah. what the question is? Just tell us what you want to tell us, Ricky. We're enjoying listening. <laughs> it's, yeah. Do you know what? I, I think I think the the cup never ends, and I think that's because my. Uh, interest in life. I'm sure, it, I think it's a polymath is the word. I, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe you can edit that in if not. But I think a polymath is somebody that is just interested in everything. Yeah. I, I'm fascinated with the whys and, and the hows of everything. So I think when I look back in my life and everything I've ever done with 
with magic, with with playing instruments, with doing things and, and just learning stuff. I, I'm I'm on this massive journey about learning. I love learning, I love growing. So I'm always interested in things. You know, curiosity I think is a massive value to me. So mm. I think this cup is just growing all the time as I get older. Who knows, maybe it will get to the point where I turn 60, 70, and then, you know, like uh, old people just put the sign on the door saying, do not disturb, <laughs> do not talk to me. And well, maybe that'll I be it. That, you know? that's, that's my question. In, in the pursuit of filling up your cup, which from the kind of high level feels very good, fulfilling, purpose, direction and everything else. But also that means you're taking action all the time. That means you're trying to find things to fill your cup. And that means actually who's designed, you know, you have said it's a porn star martini glass. <laughs> Basically yeah. a bottomless brunch, yeah, well, aren't That's you? what yeah. I'm bottomless thinking. Brunch. This is bottomless, Ricky. So so how do you know when you've achieved it? So one of the things about goals we all know is you need to be able to benchmark it. You need to be able to know when you achieved it. So how, when does that stop? I mean, you've just talked about yeah. being old and shutting the door. So are you ever going to have achieved it? Yeah. So this goes back to, uh, I remember like um, back in my corporate days before I went, you know, full time in the business, we did this like define your purpose day, you know, which yeah. I think is incredible. You know, it's a really good thing. And one of the key things like they get you to do is like a timeline of like key moments in your life that you remember. And one of the moments that I think very similar to you, this will be Alan, is that some of the key moments in my life was always in front of an audience. So as a very young person, um, I play music, you know, I'd, I'd play guitar in my room, I'd learn. And weirdly enough, um, when like, um, if like someone knocked on the door, like an electrician or someone like to come in, I remember I'd like crank up the, uh, the volume a little bit louder, you know, uh, a little bit louder to play. And it wasn't as a narcissistic thing to like show off. It was kind of like, oh my God, you know, like, you know, I'm in front of an audience, that kind of thing. I want to show how amazing like things we can do, you know, like playing guitar and stuff. Funnily enough, that electrician came around quite a lot, actually. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> long story short, yeah. Um, but another one was like, you know, I remember winning the talent show um, it, when I was about 15, 16. Uh, and I love that adrenaline being in front of an audience. And I remember when I was in my corporate days being a, a coach and a, a trainer, national trainer for Argos and being in front of an audience. Magic, I'm in front of an audience. The Confident Club, we present people. And I remember distinctly, you've just made me think about it, laying on my bed when I was younger, I had a, a magazine called Total Guitar. And there was oh a God, big, he said Total Guitar and not something <laughs> yeah, else. That's right, yeah. yes. Um, Total Guitar, uh, there was this big spread right in the middle and you could pull it out. And it was a black and white photo. Now, in hindsight, I'm guessing now, I don't know who it was at the time, but I'm thinking it was probably Kurt Cobain, like from mm. Nirvana. And it just looked like the back of him standing on stage, probably in front of Reading Festival, and just seeing this audience. It was black and white photo. And I used to have it on the roof of my um, bedroom. So when I was laying down, I could look at it. And from an early age, I think there's always been that sort of... A, a kind of legacy, I think, that what I want to yeah. do is to, not narcissistically, but to make a difference to people. So whether that is a magic trick creates wonder, whether it's like the Confident Club, we're, you know, reshaping and redefining people's beliefs so they not only can be confident presenters, but they can go achieve anything they want in their life. There's been something like that that's threaded through the answer to the question of what is I'm trying to achieve. It's mm. being on a stage, but making a difference. So whether that is, you know, a video um, a podcast it, that's the thread that, that just kind of fits through it all which if you look at everything I do it's always in front of an audience so yeah that's probably what it is I think yeah I get that and and I also sorry just because yeah. the question was how are you going to know when you've got there oh yeah and, and I and I think I think it's okay sometimes to perhaps not know that answer because that that may you know as you quite rightly said in the beginning the earlier part is like you might just wake up one day and go yeah, I'm done. I'm happy. I'm fine. Not I'm happy. Yeah. You can't say that. You know, I'm done is probably a better word or I'm there or something like that. So uh, I get well, that. What there's I a thousand have... thoughts off the back of that, by the way. Yeah. yeah, there's a massive presupposition, which we know like in NLP. And I've, I've had this through my life before I understood what NLP was. And it was uh, there's no failure, only feedback. Or you can say is there's no such thing as failure, there's only outcomes. And am I allowed to swear on this or not? Or do we have to bleep this one yeah. out? Yeah. Okay, cool. Is a, a mild swear word, perhaps? Ooh, I'll say, and you can cut it out if you like after. So remember We're not doing any C-bombs, are we? No, no, yeah, no, no C-bombs. Like okay, yeah, yeah. All fine. right, fine. Um, I might bleep it. So like, the word fear, right? Yeah, fantasize exaggerations appearing real. Or is what Steve told me from the Confident Club. It's a great story. Um, fuck everything and run. You know, that's the great yeah. phrase, which I love. So you might have to cut that out. But I don't really believe in fear. Yeah, there's things that might frighten me, but I'm just not afraid to like go do things badly because I know I learn, 
So, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy that it's not a failure. It's just an outcome. So I've, I've kind of removed failure from my language. You know, my mum and dad have always said to me, we've got no idea what, Ricky, why you're a performer, because there's no performance bone in our bodies. You're right. So, you know, you're like the, the odd one out. So maybe it was the electrician. Who knows? Right. Maybe. But, um, <laughs> um, you know, one of the key things, and though, is that yeah. it's just kind of I just want to go out there and, and I'm not afraid to fail. Whereas I think a lot of people are like, I don't want to do this. I'd love to achieve these wonderful things in life, but they're just not prepared to put in the time to go do something and fail. So if I remove failure from a language, then it's just an outcome. So, you know, so that's the, yeah. the kind of key thing really of, yeah, I, I probably don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm not afraid to make a mistake or do something because it's just an outcome and I can learn from it and then try it differently. So, yeah. What, what I've always appreciated appreciated about you, Ricky, is that you, you mentioned about that you're always learning and you're always trying to fill your cup. Is the fact that in the four years nearly that we've known you, I've I've watched that journey of you going on and learning a new course or reading that book. And so many people could say, I, I read a self-help book or um, I saw this and, and they can drop a quote here and there. But you actually implement, don't you? You're very much about <laughs> learning and then implementation to see if it works for you. And if it doesn't, it's fine. But you you do give it a really good go, don't you? Yeah, totally. I think I will get to a point one day where <laughs> someone said to me, Rookie you should be a business coach. I was like, nah. But um, <laughs> I think I think I, I, it's like I want to kind of be, you know, like a leader would go out and do it. Like I will go out there and do it first so I can understand if it works. And then I'll show you that it does work and you can yeah. come follow me. Whereas I think a lot of people just are not prepared to step out and, and try it. Whereas I'm quite happy to go try it and then say, hey, it works. And so now go do this. So here's some but, I've yeah. done. It works. Go it's do an it, incredible you know. character trait. It's semantics ultimately, yeah. but I feel that's more the mentor side than coaching side. It's like, isn't mentor like I've done it and I'm showing you how to and coaching yeah. is, you know, something so, uh, like, but, I get that. But yeah. it really is a good character trait because so many people, especially in the world of entrepreneurship as well, are either standing still or, or yeah they're not growing any further and they want that growth they want it but they, they're not prepared to put that well, extra level of, of you know, growth into that absolutely. plan to get any further and it's it, whether it's yeah. fear or the lack of time lack of sleep all of those things that we all talk about all the time but yeah. you do it and let's face it you have you're recently married you've got a small ch child at home you still yeah. find that time in your day to do that reading to do that learning to do that conversation to have conversations like these right now to yeah. bring that growth into your life. That's amazing. I, I, I think, you know, one yeah. of my favorite sort of um, quotes I know and use is to be different. You've got to, you know, if you're trying to achieve something you've never achieved before, you may have to do something you've never done before. And, yeah. and you kind of find that, um, a lot of people aren't quite prepared to do that. And it's like, have you ever run a business before? No. Okay, so you're trying to achieve something you've never achieved before, the growth of a business. So what are you doing differently? And uh, Or they do, but they'll only take it so far before their own limiting beliefs, whatever, whatever, yeah. you know, in, insert reason why here, kick in. But, um, you know, you're very much about, actually, I may have a, or I don't have a limiting belief is what we're learning because I've decided to remove yeah. that and I'm going to turn it in. And, and that is fascinating isn't it so so two things on that one then so the first thing so a great quote which you know i, I think i live by and i mentioned Love this a quote. In my, no one does um, quotes like ricky fact <laughs> i mentioned this in my speech at my wedding but the second thing is about the beliefs i think i've got to this point in my time you know I, I, not too deep now i die with ceo stuff but my life was very much a case of uh and no offense to my mum and dad at all you know it was very much a case of a small village mindset of you know, you'll go to school, Ricky, you know, not they didn't say you won't achieve much, but university wasn't on the cards, you know, because the, the money wasn't there. It would be like, Ricky, you, you might go to school. You've got to get a job, Ricky, you've got to get some money. And I could see my life being played out in that way of it'll be very small in a sense, you know, um, comfortable, you know. And I was always the why, you know, I don't like that. You know, and, uh, you know, one of my managers once said to me back in my corporate days was like, if you ever want Ricky to do something, tell him he's not very good at it. And then he'll smash it because I've just I've have like this attitude of like well if you tell me I'm not going to do it I'm going to show you I'm going to prove to you I can do it so my whole life was like that so when I then started doing magic and started creating a business I realized the possibilities were literally endless without being too wanky sorry another swear word there you know a bit woo woo because I believe in some of it but some of it I think there's the action that needs to happen but I believe that um there is literally anything you know I'd much rather be credible and go try everything and if it doesn't work then I'll say yeah it didn't work and now I'm at this point where understanding through Confident Club and stuff that I'm just trying to rewrite a lot of my beliefs I had. So I used to believe that, you know, I'd have bad luck 
traveling abroad. You know, I used to believe in lots of different limiting beliefs, but now I'm at the age where I think, well, actually, why don't I just go find out if that's true or not? And then actually most of it's not. It's just my thoughts are affecting that. The second thing then is the quote. So that's obviously my life. I'm now just going out there and just trying to prove my beliefs were they true. So if it's the case, like we mentioned earlier on, would I be a, you know, a world-class speaker or a famous person one day? It could be a belief that it might not be true, but it could work. It could well work, right? So I'm going to go yeah. find out if that's true. But the, the quote is Marianne Williamson one. I love this. I can't remember it all. Um, I think there's a religious bit in it and, I, and I'm, I'm not, I'm an atheist. So, but I love it, this piece in it. And it says like one of our greatest fears is not that we are inadequate. Our greatest fear um, is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. And then she goes on to say, who are you to be um, brave, powerful, beautiful, uh, gorgeous? Who are you not to be? And then it's this key line is you're playing small does not serve the world. And I think mm. that's just a lovely thread for me, like going, well, if I'm going to go do so, let's just go bloody big and let's do it, you know? So, yeah, that's the, the big quote for me, yeah. It's very, so true. I've got, uh, oh, yeah. So I, I, I rem now I was thinking about this and this is not kind of the profound return I feel is, you know, your, your kind of story anecdote there is worthy of. But I had a girlfriend once years ago. Sorry, what? Emily, block your ears. Emily. What? <laughs> and, and she always said, and I think I was in my early 20s, and she always said, like, whenever I go anywhere, I, I just assume it's going to go wrong. And I go, well, that's really funny because whenever I go anywhere or do anything, I assume it's going to be fabulous, you know, because it's basically that's how I'm built. And she said, yeah, but if it goes wrong and I think it's going to go wrong, then I can't be uh, disappointed or upset. And I was like, I don't disagree with your logic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. your logic is absolutely sound. But I'd much rather go in believing something is fabulous and can be fabulous and will be fabulous um, because, you know. Because of that, the positive. That's always been our attitude to parenting as well with the kids as well, is, is never yeah. telling them they can't do something. Even in the playground, I remember from a very young age with Joseph, our youngest, who's now five, he must have been oh, nearly nearly two. He was in, you know, he was toddling around, but all of a sudden he was at the top of a climbing frame about to do a fireman's pole and we all went, ah, ah, you know, the, the panic. And all of a sudden, none of us actually ran towards the fireman's pole. We just we just stood there, which was either like free, no, I think, a freeze I, I do remember. Ah, I just ah, didn't ah, notice. Yeah. And, he's and, and then down. all of a sudden, <laughs> this most pole dance a moment it's perfectly flung around spun around a few times da -da! and we're like oh he can do yeah. it you know and yeah, at, yeah. at that point we realized we don't need to kind of like protect them from the, the, the worst that could happen because the worst that could happen was a broken arm right <laughs> or, yeah yeah I, I do find that but also yeah. i think as so i'm trying to word this really politely there are certainly adults whose definition of the worst that can happen is ridiculous ridiculously ridiculously worse than actually will happen like i saw a i saw a kid i'm glossing over who it is i'm sorry a kid basically stood on a step right and the adult nearby was like get down off of that you might break your leg and i'm like or they might just graze their arm a little bit <laughs> you know as as they hit the deck and chances of grazing arm very slim chances of breaking leg like no not gonna happen at all but that kind of once yeah. again coming down to your but interpretation and mindset then you apply it. that back to business well we're obviously on this podcast is or life or life general life you know actually what is the worst that can really happen and by, and by yeah. not taking action actually trying something a little bit out of your comfort zone that it you know, could be a bit scary and absolutely you could lead to massively great things we all like to stay protected in our little bubble sometimes and yeah. that's yeah. kind of sad so, so Ricky I feel yeah. like we yeah. need to bring this kind of back to the original questions i think we're getting a fab insight mm. to you and everything else and um, and and i get it right i absolutely get your you want to try you want to put it out there um you're going to do it you want to see if you can be famous for kind of insert something here but how do you know when you've done it mm. It's that whole measure, isn't it? Again, of the measure of success. And, you know, most people, it's a financial thing. Most people, it's that fulfilling thing. I don't think I will ever have an answer because I think I'll move on to then the next thing. I don't, mm. you know, I'm a shiny magpie syndrome thing. But I um, <laughs> will always continue to just keep pushing and growing and growing. Who knows? I might get to a point when I'm, you know, 60, 70. And then I go, cool. Well, you know, I've, I've, I've mastered the life secret, whatever it is. You know, I found out yeah. what it is. Um, but I think I'm just on this ongoing journey just to understand well what is the the key to an awesome life and you know mm -hmm. that fulfillment of 
um, what it is. I, I just don't believe in like that life has to be really difficult and life yeah. can be really fun and it can be, um, you know, just, just very shortly going back to what you were saying with like um, Joseph and that, you know, with Alma, it even strongly makes that purpose even more now because as she grows up, I want her to have a wonderful life and fulfilling and that kind of thing. And I think that to the answer to the question really is, I think I'll never know, but what I have to be very careful about is the, the my language that I use, you know, um, because we know the unconscious brain is always listening. So I have to be very, very careful. Too many people in life and obviously in business and what we know is that they do this. So Al Emily, you would not let someone run into your house right now and start painting all of your walls bright red, unless you really like red, would you? I do quite like yeah. red. I, I, quite I, like red. Yeah, okay. The answer is no, yes. but even I was sat yeah. here going, well, if they did a good job, I'd probably <laughs> yeah. do it. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, no, but we it. get the point. Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't do it, right? So, hmm. But we in life do that in our mind where we let people interrupt by giving us bad thoughts or saying stuff. So, But we wouldn't let them do that in our own house. So why would we do that in, in life, mm, right? So mm. for me, the answer is that I, there, there isn't one, I don't think. I think it would just be something next or, you know... Um, what was it? Um, you know, shoot for the moon, land on the stars, whatever. I think just keep going and going and going. And and, yeah. and there is a you know going back to what you're saying. If if everything you do is bringing you fulfilment, then it can't be wrong. You know, it, yeah. you're, you're you're unlikely to wake up one day and go, oh, that was all a waste because the second the next thought, pro- well, a you don't believe in kind of failure, and, yeah. and b the second part of that is, well, all of it brought me fulfilment at that point in my life, so yeah. it can't actually be wrong. You know. Uh, bringing yeah. it to back to a, a, a practical level then, Ricky. So mm. you've, you've got these aspirations. You know you want to be bigger than you are right now. You're always learning. You're always growing. You've, you know, you're with, with the Confidence Club now. And we've known you for the last few years. And we know that there's been several pathways that you have taken to get to where you are right now. Obviously, you've got the magic side of you. You've got the, the confidence stuff. You've got the public speaking stuff. You've had the podcast. You've had the background in sales as well. How do you practically um allow yourself that growth while still paying your bills so <laughs> I, I, I suppose really is that you're mar- married with a child like i've said earlier but how yeah. it, it must be exhausting right because you've, you've you've got to still be bringing the income in month by month but you have that aspiration to do something different in the future how do you balance that yeah well my brain never switches off which i think is a <clears throat> you know double-edged sword sometimes like to be present in this day and age is just incredibly difficult anyway because of social media uh, responsibilities. So I'm always trying to be more present whenever I can. It is a very difficult thing to do. And I think that it's just not losing sight of what that end goal is. Although I don't really, I, I can see something, you know, there's like, um, it's a bit like driving, isn't it? You know, when you're driving at nighttime, you can't see past a hundred feet in front of you. Mm-hmm. But as you just keep going, oh, more the road appears. Oh, there's a lamppost. Oh, there's a sign. That's all I'm doing. I'm just driving it head and head. So to answer the question, it's like, it's just never losing sight of what's in front of you, of where you're wanting to go. Now, I can't quite see exactly where it is, but I feel like I'm in the car and it's going in that right direction. So as long as I stay on track of that, because that fulfills me, you know, so like this morning when I woke up, like, oh, great, you know, I've got... Um, I did the old ice bath, Wim Hof, way, um, oh. and I was like, yeah, great, feel great. And I was like, well, I've got an hour now. I might just spend that first half hour or 90 minutes, whatever, just thinking, oh, let's think about what is the one thing that I can do to grow my business or what is the one thing I can do to um, get more speaking gigs or whatever it might be. And then still focus on what well, the rest of the day will then be running the business. So the cogs will mm. then turn. But I think there's, um, I'm very... I spend about 90 minutes twice, three times a week of working on the one thing, you know, effectively. So whatever it is that week. So what if it is to, you know, turn over an extra 10 grand or whatever it might be. Let's just make a random number, whatever it might be. So I always spend time making in the morning and then managing in the afternoon. As you know, with my role, it can be very frustrating because um, I provide a service. So if I'm at Mm. a wedding and hosting, that's my whole day gone. So I have to really prioritize my time of like, well, when I wake up in the morning, I'm not going to look at my emails because then that will dictate the rest of my day. I will just spend 90 minutes thinking of, cool, what's the one thing I can do today to uh, help grow more visitors to my website? Or what's the one thing I can do to do this? Then after that's done, then I'll do all the emails and all that sort of thing. So you make in the morning and then you're a manager in the afternoon. That's based loosely based off obviously the one thing by Gary Keller. 
So that kind of, I don't think that really answers the question, but it's just continuing to focus on what, what is driving me forward while still in the background, still creating an operation and running a business, you know, and creating that yeah. rhythm. I, I, yeah. I, I think that's okay. I mean, I think everything says you have to have a defined goal, right? You know, but your yeah. goal today might be revenue based, right? For argument's sake. We always talk about when you drive off your drive, you have to know where you're driving to. Yeah. And, and you know, we always say Scotland as an example. It doesn't matter how you go to Scotland to get there, whether you take the motorways or the back roads, and you can change the route. You know, you can decide to go to yeah. Wales or something instead. But with yours, it's kind of like, Okay, I, I, I kind of know what I'm, it's not a kind, you know, I know what my, I want my life to be like is probably a better way. That is my yeah. goal. So as long as I'm vaguely driving north, that's okay if you're going to head into Scotland, Scotland being your life. And um, the other one yeah. I had was, um, which was, there's a lady, I don't know if you know her, we know her on Instagram, Imogen Partridge, right? Um, oh, from yeah. the wedding. I think she's in wedding. Yeah, yeah, We chat yeah. every now, we got chatting about Park Run and now we kind of chat every now and then. Park Run friends. Park Run friends. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we were talking about, very much in business, it's about, like I'm, intention, like so, I'm going to do the very definite. I'm going to do this. This is my plan. This is my strategy. And we were discussing, but sometimes something just feels right and happens. You know. Yeah. So Emily and I have probably discussed a billion business ideas, from property development to all the way down to selling sunglasses. Was one of my things I wanted to sell once. Yellow ones. Yellow ones. And. <laughs> yeah realistically the things that have just happen are usually right you know and and the things that don't happen yeah. like the sunglasses and the property development um haven't happened for a reason whether they don't meet us aren't helping us towards our own personal goals etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah no I, I don't i'm on board with what you're saying is my long-winded answer the Ricky. the property yeah. one's a great example of that isn't it because we, yeah. we know had we 10 years ago 15 years ago bought five one bed flats you know we would be probably financially free right now and having a great old lifestyle yeah. sorry what's the problem with that one then what is the problem with that one it would have it, it would have given us the you know, the financial freedom to, to but it would have been boring as you know as yeah. anything it's not what drives us and a lot of the stuff i think both of us can appreciate is we don't just do it for the money we do it for the fun and the enjoyment and filling our and cup. other people yeah, yeah. other yeah. people yeah. and, and you know, a life of doing property would have been great but ultimately it wouldn't have allowed us to meet people like yourself and have these yeah. conversations which we, is, we have the legacy yeah. thing like ricky does as well mm. don't we and you know building a small property empire to be financially free would have had a fantastic life and potentially achieve legacy in a different way but we can f we can see um some kind of legacy with yellow tuxedo yeah you know? well there's there's um three things you think make me think there so the quote i love it you know we've mentioned this before in um, magic hour um, you know, the Maya Angelou, I live my, I think my life by this, you know, people won't remember what you said, they won't remember what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. So if I fit to that, work to that, then that will, that will make me have a great life, you know, because if I can make people feel something, that's amazing, right? Mm. The second thing is what you just said there, Emily, is absolutely right, is living a life that is not conflicting of value. So if a work inquiry comes in, so this is what happened in 2020, I didn't live a life based on my values because I needed money, I needed to pay my bills yeah. because, yeah. like you said, right? Now I'm in a, a more opportunity now where the business is better because we're not in a global pandemic, you know, shh, just in case that comes back. Um, but I live a life on value. So if something comes in, so a, an inquiry came in, but like a Hindu and nothing against Hindus, but it's like, no, that's not going to be really fun for me. I don't, it might be fun, but I just don't think I want to do that. So I didn't Can, want to do I'll it. Go. I passed it on. I'll go. Yeah, you'll go, Alan. <laughs> yeah, but it's go. The, that's fun for me. It's fun for you. But as an example, it'd be like, you know, when I get a lot of um, inquiries for like, evening receptions where people are pissed out their minds it's not an environment i want to be in so i don't want to do it so you know it you know it's a worst case scenario whatever um, um but basically it's living the life of values right so if it's fun does it fit around fun fulfillment freedom family if it doesn't touch one of them then i don't want to do it you know if it sounds exciting like what we mentioned with the celebrity wedding earlier on this year it was a low peak low paid gig but i thought it'd be quite fun it'd fit around it and it fit around my family so i did it um can't remember the third one excitement there we go we were talking about something but um i think it was just the case of yeah it, it's about not contradicting on your values that's the most important thing isn't it and why do we bother doing it and it's like people stuck in a nine to five job who just absolutely hate it if it doesn't fit with your values why are you doing it but then obviously then people can't 
process that to think, well, I can do something about it, you know? So it's taking some responsibility for going, hey, yeah, this doesn't fit with me. This isn't where I want to be, so I'm not doing it, you know? And, mm. oh, this is, I remember now, sorry, thank you. Your answer to your question was, it's the, the old compounding thing, isn't it? You know, the old, I think it's Darren Hardy mentioned this about a plane. If a plane took off from uh, Southampton, right, to, um, to New York, if it just changed its trajectory just by one degree, it'd be on the other side of the world. And over time, you just think, well, one degree is nothing. But I think that's the focus I do now is I'll do that 90 minutes twice, three times a week. What's the 90 minutes first thing I can do in the morning to, you know, the one thing I can do to grow my business, whatever it might be. Over time, if I do that every single week, three times a week, that's three, six, nine, 12, 15 times a month, maybe over time, that 1% goes. So contradictory to what I said, as I'm a millennial, as I'm very, very impatient, but, um, you know, contradicting to that, I am putting those 1% in every day, every week, which over time is moving me closer and closer and closer. So I think yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. So it makes the, and I don't think this was on pre-recording of this, makes the uh, needing more energy, not time, yeah. it's needing more, yeah. so much more worthwhile because you know that at this point you need more energy, but actually that hard graft is going to make that. That swing that pendulum a little bit further around, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Alan, do you have a question? Yeah, right, Ricky. We're going to wrap up slowly, and yeah. so we have our kind of our, our bookend question uh, to kind of mirror the first one. Not so, as big as the not first as big one. as I don't know, Emily. I think it is in its own way. So, if you could go back and visit your younger self, you know, you actually talked about younger self today. Thank you for sharing all that, and put your arm around the shoulder, take them for a chat, say whether you want to say, you know, something positive or it won't be negative, but you know what I mean? What would you say to your younger self? <laughs> it's a bit cliche, I think, isn't it? Because I think a lot of people say this, but <laughs> Miss the emo the, face. Yeah, yeah. No, I enjoyed that. It was great. I'm, emo's coming back, Emily. I'm telling you, I'm great. Loving this. Um, <laughs> it's a bit cliche because I think everybody says this, don't they? But it's like, you are enough, you know, things will be all right. You know, what you're probably going through right now, the, the lack of clarity, the lack of understanding, it will play out. If you just keep being you, doing what you're doing, it will work out. I think that's the thing, isn't it? It would be, you know, I said this uh, ironically to um, uh, to my mother-in-law this morning, right? And I like to think about this. Uh, if I could go back in time, it'd be amazing, right? So Alma, my daughter, she she does this thing sometimes where she just zones out, right? Like just, and I go, Alma, you know, and she's like back again, right? And I don't know what this, there's something, I can't remember what it is, something to do with their development stage. And I said, oh, that'd be amazing. What I think is I'm imagining that Alma 50 years in the future is traveled back in time somehow and she's just popped into Alma's body to spend two more minutes with dad, you know, or to have a lovely moment. And that's just her zoning out. It's like her body taking over. Do you know what I mean? So again, I'd love to go back in time. I can't do that, but it would be, my answer would be to go back in time and just say, you are enough. Yeah, you are absolutely putting all the right progress in. It might not look like it, but you will have a, a great life. Yeah, so I think that'll be it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Again, the thing I would say to you as well yeah. is you are only in your early 30s. You, know, you have <laughs> yeah. so much more. You're not old like us, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so much more usable life ahead of you as well. Uh, contrary to a previous mm. podcast on the um, the Three Men podcast where you said, I'm not the little one for, when I'm I 40. Know. That's quite a statement. But I think actually you are destined yeah. for massive things if you carry on the way you're going right now. Yeah. And We'll see you on the stage. Yeah. We'll see you on the stage. Is it to, right, uh, Tony Robbins? Oh, sorry. I think Tony Robbins right, no, says, no, 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 um, I think he says, doesn't he, like you can overestimate what you can do in a year, but you can underestimate what you can do in five years. So yes. I think, yeah, who knows where this will be, you know, um, the possibilities are endless, isn't it? So thank you for that kind comment. Yeah. And, and you'll be on that stage with me, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you there. I hope so. No, I hope so. We will, yes. Not. Oh, I can't believe it. Look, Ricky, thank you so much. Um, we, 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 look, we love you. We love talking to you. We love being involved in each other's adventures, if that's okay. Definitely. And uh, yeah, we will see you again soon. Take it easy, mate. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone. Bye. Bye.